Great to see everybody here. My name is Anand Parikh. I'm the Chief Medical Advisor at the Bipartisan Policy Center. Frank? So, hi everybody. I am a, a futurist and I, I straddle the world of fascination and fear if you spend the kind of time I, I do looking at what's coming. Uh, and really the phenomena of pace and the number of dots that are emerging that really need connecting in ways that allow us to see where this future is going is just fascinating. If you could pull up the, the slide that I have just to give you a sense of what I mean by that. I use this, uh, this visual which really represents both, you have the slide? Okay, uh, it might be a little bit harder to see there, but this slide starts to talk about some of the convergence of the sciences and technology, a lot of things going on in the middle around society, and then a number of emerging scenarios that will really transform our world. And I spend a lot of time in each of these scenarios, but in the context of today, the healthy life extension scenario is the important one. And if you look at the visual, I know it's hard, I usually build this so it's not as overwhelming, but there's a number of dots that do connect to enable our healthy life extension. And there are a number of folks in the life sciences community that believe the first person to live to 200 has already been born. Hmm. And the advances in the sciences and technologies and, and in computing capacity and energy, as those advances and more dots that connect occur, it enables more breakthroughs in terms of innovation and, and advances in sciences and technology. So, for example, just two things that were mentioned on stage here, the notion of isolation and being cared for in the home. As the smart home emerges and the sensors and artificial intelligence and machine learning actually can help us understand the patterns of the elderly in their home and understand when anomalies are occurring and then deal with those anomalies uh, proactively, the smart home becomes a mechanism to enable healthy life extension and living in the home. And mobility, as a service and as autonomous cars take over in the next 15 years, then the elderly and the young and the disabled also get to be mobile uh, through technology and advances in those kinds of things. So the importance here is the, the pace phenomena is creating an explosion in innovation that folks aren't comprehending yet. And I think uh, the service to provide the connection of these dots is the most important mechanism in enabling some of the advances that I think will happen in the area of life extension. So you talk to CEOs and executives all the time about healthy life extension, healthy aging. What is your number one piece of advice for them to do right now as they think about the future? The, the, the key message, um, which is not just business, but I'd say any leader anywhere, is to start thinking differently. But the biggest challenge I face as I try to impress upon leaders that the world is changing in ways that we haven't seen before is to realize that our belief system, the things that have made us successful in the past will fail us in the future because things are changing that rapidly and that significantly. So the key difference in the way they should act going forward is really just thinking differently about this world that's emerging right? and applying, uh, being open to changes to our own intuitions and belief systems because those changes are occurring anyway. So one is just really thinking differently. And the other one, um, I thought it was great the CEO of Pepsi talking about purpose because what we're starting to see is, is a shift from the, uh, the profit motive to more of a purpose orientation and that can only benefit society at some, uh, at some point, right? And so accepting the notion that purpose, not just profit, is, is a part of the equation. And I'll say this, um, you know, we all talk about the millennial generation and how societal good uh, is part of their, their kind of DNA. And that's not by accident. The, the internet and the connections that it created around the world has exposed them to things that when I was growing up, you just didn't have exposure to. And so the empathy level goes up as you're exposed to things like that. Now think about the world that's coming. When virtual reality, and if anybody's ever participated in, in a virtual experience, you would get this right away, but you're actually there. And so empathy is gonna go up again because you're not just reading something or maybe seeing it online you're actually there, you're experiencing it. And so I expect that the empathy levels will rise again. And as that happens, a purpose orientation will follow. And so you're gonna see a lot of world leaders in their mission statements focus on more purpose. Profit will always, always be part of the equation, but purpose gets to be a bigger, play a bigger role. And as that happens, I envision the acceleration of some of the things that I do talk about for the good. But as I think I was saying offline, might have been with you, there's always unintended consequences. So the other side of this conversation is, as we advance in these areas, we have to be careful of the unintended consequences. And folks like Elon Musk and his talking about AI and what it might do to society, all those things have to be balanced. So balance is the third part of the equation. Thank you, Frank. 
So I'm a big believer that the building blocks required to solve some of these great challenges are there. <coughs> um, and so enabling innovation, the research required to continue to innovate, and, and agility in the regulatory process, because the speed at which some of these innovations are manifesting themselves and the scale, they, they scale quickly. Like you just take the driverless car or the, the shared services phenomena, it scales quickly. So how do we create an agile regulatory process that enables innovation to thrive as opposed to stifling innovation? Right. Spirit of thinking differently. Um, in parts of the world, these problems are so acute that it's accelerating the path of innovation. So for example, in Japan, the aging issue is acute. And so robotic caregivers are already a thing, uh, taking care of the elderly, bathing them, et cetera, et cetera. And from the loneliness perspective, I could show you a video of Sophia, the human-like robot, that you, would ne you, you could get to be your friend, clearly, when you communicate with this robot. And so in the context of the lonely, is a robotic solution to that on the horizon, right? And so these are all building blocks, as I said before, and it forces you to think a little differently about solving some of these problems.